Hello and welcome to Extreme Gameplays where I play games stylishly. Today's video is different. It's about God of War 1. God of War 1 is one of my absolute favorite games of all time. The game came out in 2005 with the freshness of a 2019 game. The gameplay is so smooth, has a very nice combat system, puzzles, and some questionable platforming. And on top of that, one amazing hell of a story to tell about the main protagonist, Kratos. And what have I decided to do today? Make a video about 5 things this game got right and 5 things it got wrong. This idea was recommended to me by Mac Dynasty. Thank you for your idea. Now, do note that for the wrongs, I'm really gonna have to nitpick here because this game is too good to pick out its wrongdoings. And I can safely say that the wrongs in it are just purely from the team of Santa Monica having this as their first God of War game. Meaning they fixed a lot of the stuff in the sequel and refined some edges. So it was only natural to make some of these mistakes. However, I still have to nitpick to find stuff wrong with this gem of a game. Let's not waste time and let's start with 5 things it got right. Number 1 we have combat. Of course I'm starting with this one. God of War 1's combat is simple, but it gets complicated once you select the harder difficulties. Your usual bread and butter combo does not work on anyone or any crowd when you select harder difficulties. For example, you should know how to really play with your food on the harder difficulties. For example, making some crowd hazards occur by snatching an enemy off the air and slamming him into other enemies. This is exclusive to God of War 1. Only in God of War 1 can you snatch an enemy and do a 180 with him and slam him to anywhere else. It's returned for God of War 3 but only on one enemy and that enemy is the Olympus Fiend. You can slam him anywhere but God of War 1 allows you to do that to every enemy. Speaking of enemies, they're all awesome to fight and difficult because remember... PS2 era baby. How Kratos swings the blades and how the enemies react and when they react is all calculated perfectly in God of War 1. The game's combat is easy to learn but hard to master. There are billions of strats on how to take a room on, you have your magic, you have your rage, but you still have to learn the ways around the game to make combat encounters as fun as possible or make them optimal as it is the only way to survive on the harder difficulties. And can we talk about the weapons? Especially our main unique weapon that spawned the wave of God of War clones, the Blades of Chaos are my favorite weapons of all time in any media. The idea of it and the execution, all of them perfected. They did have some stuff wrong but again that returns to the game being the first in the series meaning it all got fixed and they refined the edges in later developments of the games. The Blades of Chaos are really awesome is what I'm trying to say. And the secondary weapon is also really cool. Not as good as it could have gotten but I would say it's really fun to use. And all the magics bro. Like it's crazy how all this is in one game. All these diverse amazing magic attacks just awesome honestly. God of War 1 set a lot of the standards for future God of War games. It was the seed planted in there and the other God of War games only improved upon it. And oh they improved nicely. Like for example you had air grabs introduced in the first game, carried on throughout the entirety of the franchise except for God of War 4 but really that's a discussion for another day. You had air snatches, same thing, they returned in all the other games, they got more and more refined and yeah. You had grabbing an enemy and having three options what you could do with him. And as I said, they improved upon that as well. So in God of War 2, you had four options instead of three. In God of War 3, the diversity of the options increased. And finally, for the final comp blast of the series, that is Ascension, came in and gave us the best of the system. Where you snatch an enemy and play with him however you want. Five options for the player and all of them fun and rewarding. God of War 1 introduced Rage Mode, the other games improved upon it. It introduced Magic and all the other games after followed suit and improved. What I'm basically saying is that all the crazy moves and mechanics that you see in God of War 3 and Ascension and even 4 to some extent, all derived from the old father, God of War 1. God of War 1 created its own combat mechanics, the other games improved upon them perfectly. There's a lot more to the combat, but I think... Enough said. The second thing this game got right, of course, was the story. Both the story and the pacing of the set story. Kratos on the verge of dying calls for Ares, the god of war. Ares helps him, Kratos becomes his slave. In return, ultimate power. Kratos is crazy and unstoppable now. Raids a village with the Spartan army. Ares puts Kratos' family in that village. Kratos accidentally kills them. Ares said he did that to make Kratos a great warrior, but really, bro? No, 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 no. Look at me. Look at me, bitch. Seriously? Anyways, Kratos gets on his revenge mission both to kill Ares and to get his memory washed so that he forgets what he went through and. 
Yeah. He succeeds, the gods deny his memory wash, tries to uninstall his life, the gods deny it, and they make him the god of war. Of course, there's a lot more to it, but this is the story simplified. Go ahead and play this game and catch up to the amazing details in the story. The pacing of the story is also really good while playing. Except for the Cliffs of Madness part where it feels like it's dragging out, but it's fine. You get these cutscenes and flashbacks every now and then explaining the story, and it's forgotten due to the critics who fucking ignorantly washed the game off as a button man. God of War always had a story, goddammit. Fuck these critics. I'm trying to clean my fucking image, so I promised the fucking critics I wouldn't say fucking for six minutes. And so yeah, it got the story hella right. Except for the last teeny bit of cutscene that showed the world wars and stuff. You know, they basically did not know that they would make a sequel and stuff at, at the time, so it's fine. The third thing that God of War got right, the design. Everything. Level design, character design. The 2005 era of games had a lot of this brown filter equipped to it. While God of War 1 had that filter as well, it didn't however suffer from this filter. As we see all the level designs in the game complement the story and place that we're in. Pandora's temple giving this eerie vibe, this abandoned place that no mortal can defeat its challenges and all that good stuff. All the destroyed walls in it and the paintings on the walls. Or the level design of the starting chapter in a heavy storm where it's raining and destruction is going on thanks to the Hydra, Hades. Just amazingly beautiful levels and for when it comes to how everything is placed, yeah, it's placed in a way to make Kratos legit feel like he's in hell. What did you expect? And so the color and design of the level, you're essentially playing on the giant skeleton, this amygdala type of skeleton, I don't know how to describe it. It's amazing. And now to the iconic character design saying, God, where do I start? Ares design? As Midgard Chronicles said it. Oh, and I can't forget to mention that ridiculous beard without a mustache that makes Ares look like a complete douchebag, which is perfect. I want to kill the bastard even more, and there is already a ton of reasons to kill him. The game paints him as a villain the moment you see his face. You just know what you gotta do. You just want to punch that face. The Minotaur's design, the Hydra. God, it's just all the characters are so unique in their own way and I love it. The normal enemies, all of this is just in one game. Like, look at the Gorgons, the Minotaurs, the Legionnaires, the Satyrs, the Cerberus. It all comes full circle. This Greek themed game really is Greek. And finally, Kratos. Of all the designs they thought of and then to finally pick this design but change the color of the tattoo to red at the last moment is just a perfect touch to making a cool character design. How he simply looks tired, angry, filled with rage and again most importantly a woman abuser. The design when it comes to everything is just done perfectly, nothing wrong with it and I love it. The fourth thing it got right is the soundtracks. Now these can range from the splendor of Athens that gives you a mythological vibe of a place that is calm and feels like an empty void. To the madness that is Ares' boss fight soundtrack. Prepare to join your family, Spartan! And back to Ares soundtrack again but this time it covers him from afar. As in look at how big he is and how far away you are from him, both in power and distance.
And then you have literal madness when Zeus' wrath divine starts playing in the background while you fight the clones. It just captures everything perfectly. This is legit madness going on. The whole level starts collapsing and you're still fighting as if nothing is happening and it's just, it's just mad. The soundtracks man, I simply want to say that it completely captures what's presented to the player. You get absorbed in the setting and the music that plays really captures you. Music is everywhere in this game. Walk down a hallway and you'll always hear some type of music playing. Even if there isn't any music, there's always ambient music. This is something the rest of the series stuck to, thank god, but ditched in some spots for God of Ascension. And God of War 4 fucked it up completely where nearly 80% of the game does not have a single slide of music. Some light, very ambient music starts, but I don't know why God of War 4 did that. But that's for another day, for another video, not this one. Music in God of War 1 is phenomenal. The fifth thing God of War 1 got right is the art style. Now I'm a guy who prefers art style over realism. And I know this game went for realism as well, but when you look at it gameplay wise, it did not try to be some weird game where everything physically worked like real life. I know Kratos physically moves like a ballet dancer when performing the squared attack with the blades. And I know it all physically works so good and it is focused on realism and how Kratos moves and how Kratos is painted. but. Still you can still see that the style wasn't going for 100% realism. And that's fine and so good actually for me. Because for me a beautiful art style that ages this beautifully is much better than going for realism and then looking back at the game. Another really good example is Devil May Cry 4 with its absolutely magnificent art style that aged just like God of War 1 and 2. It aged like a dream. I love the art style. Going for this vibrant, saturated experience in 2005. Play this game in 30 years and you'll see what I mean. It's unique without the need of crazy ass GTX 1080 Ti graphics. And that's basically it for the things it got right. Of course it got a million more things right, but here I'm talking about the absolute best stuff that it gave me the right way. And this is all my opinion just to let y'all know. So now that we got this huge cum shot of things done right out of the way, let's move on to the things that got either wrong or hella hella wrong. I really have to nitpick here. First thing it got wrong is the orbs not being collected when they're far. It's sad because this game introduced the best set of orbs a human could ever ask for, yet they fucked it up by making them useless when they're far. And again, just a thing for a first game that got fixed later but still, it's very bad that you can't collect them when they're far away. The second thing it got wrong is the parry system. Now the game's parry system is actually good, you have three options after parrying but it has a lot of flaws as well. You can get cancelled out of parrying which seriously? Or some stupid things like being unable to parry projectiles which is I don't know bro why? Even without projectile parrying, just the normal parry. It's good, but I wish we had iframes when parrying, bro. Like, come on, that should come with the territory. But anyways, of course it got fixed again, because Santa Monica are just kings when it comes to this. Anyways, the third thing is the rage mode. Now, of all the great things the combat had to offer, it also offered one hell of a devil trigger mechanic for Kratos, the rage of the gods. But it has a lot of spots that it went wrong with. For example, it takes the power of 50 suns clashing in to each other to fill it up. Why? I swear some people even forget they have the rage mode. It's that bad. It's honestly sad because it looks so good and the attacks are all flashy and fast. It's awesome. But it takes ages to recharge. Also another thing wrong with it. Once you turn it on, you ain't coming back. Once you go spank, you ain't coming back. Am I right, baby? No! 
You're wrong. This hurts. Why can't I turn it off? They, of course, took notes for God of War 2, but bruh, I would have... You know what? Whatever. They got a lot of stuff wrong and a lot of stuff right with the rage mode. I'm, I'm just gonna let it be for what it is. It is what it is. The fourth thing it got wrong is the upgrade menu. No, not the design or the idea or anything. The fucking time it takes to upgrade a weapon. It's so slow. It takes an hour to upgrade a single weapon. And it's sad because it's so creative and beautiful in design and unique to give it that that type of treatment. Again, fixed in the later games. But still, why is it this slow? And finally, the fifth and last thing it got wrong was the platforming and puzzles. Listen, I don't know if it was just me back in the day, but the challenge of Hades and these things in Hades got me to heights of rage that I never imagined myself reaching. I swear, there was this one time where I got so mad I started cry raging. Yes, that is cry raging that I just said. And I got the disc out of the PS2, broke the disc, held it near my face and screamed at it. And then I threw the motherfucker on the ground and started stomping the broken disc. And my mama was fine with it. Like, bro, when your mama is fine with you raging, you know it's real. You know she feels you. Because, man, the platforms and puzzles in this game were meant to torture people. For the love of God, who created these? Of course, I am grown up and better now. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I do say... Okay! And I was just talking about great design, bro. No, no, no! I don't back down. Who the hell made this? Who the fuck made this? I need your address, please. Whoever created this. Whoever made that. Literally eat my whole ass. Psych, bro. It wasn't about being a little kid. God of a One is legit hard. Period. Thank God they took notes for the sequel and ditched these crazy ass platforming sections. And as for the puzzles, some of them were really tedious and just took long. Like the ones in the Cliffs of Madness. Bruh, you for real? The puzzles were... Oh God, my head hurts. Let's just stop. But this is what I think about the things that God of a One got wrong. I know I can still find some bad stuff in there, but this portion of the video is nitpicky as it is, so I'll leave it to the retrospective that I've been talking about for months now. I just don't have time, okay? I'm really sorry. I will do them though, for the whole series except four, and I'll try to do them before Ragnarok drops, but still, give me some time bros, so I'm really sorry. And with that, we reach the end of today's video, did you like it? Subscribe if you liked it, I make God of War content. The growth of the channel is as real as it comes, shit is amazing. Thanks a lot for the awesome support, it's been your Extreme Gamer Zesty, hope y'all enjoyed it, peace.